Wonderful. Well, good morning. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I was telling a group earlier that one of the uh, parts of being a congresswoman that I'm adjusting to is that when I reach out to people and ask them to come to Vermont, uh, important people come. And I'm so excited that Secretary Deb Holland has uh, decided to spend some time with us here in Vermont. It's been such a joy to have the time with her this morning talking about the outdoors in Vermont and how it relates not just to our economy, but our sense of well-being for, for all of us, especially our youth. And I'm so grateful that uh, Secretary Holland and President Biden has been supporting the, the Northern Forest Initiative to the tune of $25 million that is going to help us and the other northern states here in New England uh, to consistently uh, and, and with great focus tackle climate change, which I know is top of mind for all of us in Vermont, especially over the last few days. This is feeling more like August than July in Vermont. It's been incredibly hot. Of course, we've been dealing with the smoke from the wildfires as well. And it is so important to talk about uh, conservation, but also how do we preserve the natural environment so that we can continue to enjoy it as Vermonters. It's one of the things that, that we enjoy most about living here in this most beautiful state. And the natural world, as I've mentioned before, uh, both as a, a state senator and now as a, a congresswoman, the natural world is part of our mental health well-being as well. And we want to make sure that we can do everything that we can to make sure that it is a safe, uh, vibrant place for all, us, for all of us to be out in. Now, it is so uh, critically important to all of us to think about the health of the lake here as, as we are standing here. And I know we heard this morning from a round table that we did with people who work within the, the outdoor recreation field, talking about how the lake also has to be part of our focus here. And Senator Welch and I and Senator Sanders are gonna continue to figure out how to bring investments back to Vermont to help us with that uh, very troubling situation as well. It's integral to the health and well-being of Vermonters and our ecosystem and our uh, economic system as well. So at this time, I'm going to introduce my uh, colleague who will, will speak to uh, all of you about his experience in, in the Senate and also in the House in working with uh, Secretary Holland and, and what it means for us to have her here with us today. Uh, Senator Welch. Uh, uh, thank you, Becca. Uh, Secretary Holland, it's so wonderful to have a 35th generation New Mexican visit Vermont for her first time. It really is wonderful. Uh, first of all, Vermont is so much about the working landscape and access to the outdoors for people who want to get the benefit of living in that landscape. And we had just had a round table with several groups that are doing everything from making bike trails, the lake for sailing, uh, the, the, uh, hut, the hut system that we want to develop, possible and accessible to all Vermonters. And the funds that have come to Vermont through the Investing in America Act are going to facilitate that work that is going to be so meaningful for so many generations to so many Vermonters. And that is absolutely essential, that we commit ourselves in Vermont to sustaining access to the outdoors, the value that we have on being custodians and stewards of the landscape and fully appreciating the obligation we have to make this something that is available to Vermonters for generations to come. And the funds that, uh, that Bernie and Becca and I fight in Washington to bring back to Vermont to help our partners here are absolutely essential to that. But the real hard work is done by local Vermonters who are doing everything they can. Uh, to make this resource, this beautiful state that we enjoy, available for the mental health, for the physical health, and for the environmental stewardship that's our responsibility. One of the things I think the Secretary may talk about is our commitment to reforestation. Uh, as you all know, we just had the three hottest days in the history of the world. Uh, this argument about whether climate change is real or is not is long gone. Uh, what we now face is the practical steps that we can take as quickly as possible that is going to help us address 
the absolute urgent challenge of climate change. And the work that we're doing uh, with Forest uh, is a major and significant contributor to how we can address climate change in the long term. Secretary Hallen was my colleague in the House, uh, it was Becca's a colleague in the House, and there was just an enormous sense of exhilaration when the President Biden appointed her to be uh, the first Native American to serve as Secretary of the Interior. Uh, she's a person that has a soft voice uh, and the strength uh, of a pioneer. Uh, she is someone who is extremely well respected on both sides of the aisle in the House, focused on getting things done, and that value that she has lived all her life as a person of the outdoors, a steward of the outdoors, a Native American who's had the outdoors stolen from that community. Uh, we're so proud to have her here and want to express to her how much we value the work that she's doing. So I now introduce to you the Secretary of Interior, uh, Secretary Deb Halland. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. That was a very kind introduction. And thank you, uh, Representative Balint, for welcoming me to your beautiful district. It, it is truly wonderful. And we had a chance to walk around uh, the city a little bit last night. And of course, um, we got creamies because that's the thing to do when you're in Burlington. Uh, so today, though, uh, we're here to talk about how President Biden's Investing in America agenda provides historic funding to address the climate crisis. We know that families in Vermont are already feeling the impacts of climate change. Winter is starting later, rainstorms are more intense, and summers are warmer, and warmer sooner, as the Congresswoman mentioned. As the climate crisis wor worsens and biodiversity slips away, strengthening our response to disappearing species and habitat loss is crucial if we are to leave behind a livable planet for future generations. These priorities are at the core of the Biden-Harris administration's all-of-government approach to addressing the climate crisis and protecting the species that all of us depend on. Our Investing in America agenda is putting resources where they can truly make a difference. The Inflation Reduction Act is the most significant legislation in U.S. history to tackle the climate crisis. Thanks to an extraordinary $25 million investment, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has new funding for a significant landscape conservation approach for a climate resilient northern forest. This investment will provide for the development and implementation of a collaborative cross-jurisdictional conservation plan across northern tier forests in 10 states, including right here in Vermont. And it will improve infrastructure and habitat to be more climate resilient in the Midwest and Northeast regions. The northern forest ecosystem provides critical habitat for wildlife and outdoor recreation. As all nature is, the northern forest will be an ally as we address the climate crisis by restoring balance to nature. Restoring and protecting bottomland hardwood forests helps to increase resilience to flooding from large storm events. It improves water quality and forest health. It increases public safety and improves public access. The best way to accomplish these outcomes is to work together because we know collaborative conservation absolutely works. And that's why efforts in this region will be developed in close collaboration with state agencies and Indian tribes and will use indigenous knowledge gained over millennia by the original stewards of these lands. This type of collaborative conservation is at the heart of the America the Beautiful initiative, a decade-long challenge to pursue locally led and voluntary efforts to conserve, connect, and restore the lands, waters, and wildlife upon which we all depend. This morning, we met with members of the outdoor recreation community who know firsthand the value of this work. The outdoor recreation is a powerhouse for our nation's economy, which generated $862 billion in 2021 
right here in Vermont. That included $1.5 billion in the state's GDP and provided for 14,582 jobs. Conservation isn't just critical for our landscapes, but it also ensures access to the outdoors for folks regardless of their income or backgrounds. It creates and sustains local economies. We all have a vested interest in its success. While I'm here, I'll have a chance to see where partnerships and collaboration have made conservation of that area a success. With funding from the Inflation Reduction Act coming to the Northern Forest, not only will we protect these special landscapes that make these communities so beautiful, but we will also help address the climate crisis and support local economies. Thank you so much for coming today, and I believe Felicia will help us to manage some questions. Thank you all. If you could just raise your hand, and whenever you have a question, introduce yourself and the news org that you're with. We'll start here. Um, Abigail Giles with Vermont Public. Um, I'm just curious if you can share a little bit more um, about the sorts of, the kind of work that, that these funds would be used to do, um, particularly in Vermont. Yeah. Well, of course, we have we have amazing and wonderful partners. We also have a terrific and uh, dedicated uh, career staff on the ground. Uh, and so uh, as to the specific programs, we're happy to get in touch with you about the specific things that this funding will, um, will address. However, I do want to say that it's important that we are connecting with the local um, the local folks on the ground here. We want to make sure that we are doing things right and you can only do that if you're in connection with the people who live here, who know the landscape, who understand uh, what exactly uh, we need to do. But restoration on these landscapes is critical, um, as I said in my remarks, uh, not only for the uh, animals and the ecosystem, but also for ac safety and access to these areas. Oh, good, great, great. good, please. Yes, thank you. Hello, um, I'm Kyla Hasty, and I'm the acting regional director for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services Northeast Region. Um, so these funds are going to be used across a uh, 10 state area. And as the secretary said, they're going to be used to develop um, a landscape conservation plan to look at the entire northern forest. And so that's, you know, Vermont as well as these other 10 states to make sure that we're um, making a down payment now for the future and really thinking about the long term investments. Um, it also, it, we're going to do more forest inventory. We need to understand better how are these systems changing with climate. Um, and so understanding better what do we have now, what do we want the future to look like, and how can we then manage sustainably going forward. And then finally, we're going to be putting projects on the ground. We're working right now with our state partners to help identify the most important places where we can be doing stream restoration work. Um, because, you know, some of these forests are, are um, uh, degraded with roads or uh, stream crossings that may not allow for flow of water that, you know, comes into Lake Champlain or into the Great Lakes. And so trying to make sure that we're creating fish passage so we can bring fish back, improve water quality. Um, also very important for uh, carbon sequestration. And so really looking at, at that um, as well. So hopefully that helps. Yeah. Calvin Cutler with um, Channel 3 News. Is, is there a concern, you mentioned there's 10 states or 10 municipalities uh, that will be uh, involved in this work. Is there a concern that some of them might not want this kind of a, a plan from, you know, that's federally funded? They might want to manage their own forests and come up with their own plans and styles of, of doing this. Right. Well, of course, as we both mentioned, it's we're, you know, anytime we have funding that goes for um, projects such as this, um, we have opportunities to consult with the folks on the ground. Um, we are making sure that those conversations are happening because we want to make sure we're putting the money where it really matters. So um, I know that the Fish and Wildlife Service will do an amazing job of connecting with those um, communities and those people. And um, I, I believe that this funding will make a real difference 
um, for the ecosystems and um, the, the forests uh, that we intend. Thank you. Would you like to answer sure. that? Sure. Um, well, uh, the funding goes through 2026, and so, but we're um, still working collaboratively with our partners um, and local communities to try to iron out all the all the details of how long it will take. So um, we don't have all of those details quite yet. As the secretary said, we're trying to make sure that we're very inclusive, um, that we're really partnering with folks, and so. Um, we want to make sure that we, you know, listen to voices as, as we're putting these projects together before we finalize that, any of those uh, details. Okay. We have a question here. Uh, I'm Sam Israel from ABC 22, Fox 44 News. I um, was curious if someone could speak about how specifically the plan, I know it's spoke about Vermont's forests, but how the money is going to be used uh, for Lake Champlain. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> we have the expert here. <laughs> Um, well, so like I said, Ver Vermont is um, one of 10 states um, that we're working with. Um, in Vermont, we have two national wildlife refuges. This funding was very specific to be used um, both on national wildlife refuges as well as um, state agencies. So state wildlife management areas have the opportunity as well to be able to access funding. So um, we're still having conversations with the state of Vermont about what might make sense there. Um, and so again, those details aren't, aren't quite worked out. Um, and then for our national wildlife refuges, again, we have uh, Missisquoi, which is very tied to the health of um, Lake Champlain, um, as well as the Nolhegan, uh, uh, part of the Silvio Conti, which is actually tied to the health of the Connecticut River. And so really both ecosystems um, may benefit from these funds and certainly will benefit uh, from this sort of long-term plan to look at the health of um, our lands, partnering also with the Forest Service, with states. So it's not really just about our lands, it's all part of the bigger, the bigger uh, puzzle um, and how Lake Champlain and the other Great Lakes um, you know, can benefit from these funds for the long term. Any other questions from press here? One last one. Sorry, one last one. You mentioned that this funding is coming from the American Rescue Plan. As you know, we're in a divided Congress. Um, so the prospect maybe of, of having more funding for projects like these, I guess, yeah. can you maybe speak about how you see some of these funds maybe, maybe or maybe not playing out politically? Quickly, it's the Inflation Reduction Act. Yes. Oh, sorry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you American said American Rescue. Rescue. Plan. Yeah. Which is also amazing, but yes. Inflation Reduction Act. Yes. Inflation Reduction Act. IRA. Yeah. So um, I will say that um, the Inflation Reduction Act happened because uh, members of the House and members of the Senate uh, recognized that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to. Um, to put climate change front and center, as well as everything else that the Inflation Reduction Act does. So I, I want to say that uh, we're, the president is, uh, is proud of the opportunities that this has given uh, to the American people. And I would perhaps love to have the senator also say a few words about the Inflation Reduction Act. Well, your, your, your question is about future funding, and we don't know. It is a divided Congress. But my view, uh, we can't turn our back. The three hottest days in the history of the world, the three hottest days in the history of the world, the debate about whether climate change is real, that's all over. The question is, how are we going to reverse it? And that has to be top of mind for everyone. And that's going to take funds. We've got to make the option for people to have clean energy, an affordable option, and the incentives that are part of what we've passed, especially uh, in the Inflation Reduction Act, have resulted in billions and billions of private sector investment where our marketplace is responding to the urgent need and desire that people have for clean energy alternatives. So that's the argument we have. I think it's very persuasive. Uh, but we're going to have to get 218 votes uh, in the future in the House, and we're going to have to get probably 60 votes in the Senate. But you know what? The heat and the effects of climate change 
no, no political boundaries. When you're in a red state, you're in a blue state. You care about your kids in their future. Deb, uh, Secretary Holland mentioned when she was growing up, nobody, n none of her young peers ever had to ask their parents about what's happening in the planet. Kids are always asking that to us now. And we've got to change that. And that's true, whether whoever you voted for and wherever you live. So I'll just add briefly, uh, Calvin, I was uh, spending the day yesterday up in the Champlain Islands and spent quite a bit of time in, in Alberg talking to folks in, in that area about this exact issue. Because what I heard throughout my travels yesterday was this is not the time for the federal government to turn away from investing in rural America. And so it's a real concern that folks, leaders on the ground have, is that these investments from IRA, certainly from the American Rescue Plan, from COVID relief funds, from the infrastructure bill, this is um, a statement that Congress and the Biden administration has made that the time to invest is now and we cannot retreat from that. And I heard that across the political spectrum yesterday on my trip is that these towns, villages uh, across Vermont who have, have really uh, been bearing the brunt of not just the pandemic, but uh, climate change and how it impacts them and their, their bottom line for their community members. This is not the time for us to be uh, shrinking those investments that we're making. And so I was um, heartened by what I heard. And of course, that is the work that I have ahead of me, uh, being the lone member in the House, is that we cannot allow a small group of extremists to make it impossible for us to do what's right for the American people, which is to continue to invest in all of America, including rural America.